Hello, my dear learners! How are you today? I hope everyone is doing fine. This is Teacher Febby, your Science 5 class teacher for today. Our topic is all about the interactions in the intertidal zones. But before we start our class, let us pray. Oh God, please bless our class today. Amen. Now class, anyone can share what was our lesson in our last meeting? Yes? Yes, it's all about story. So what is story? Very good! A story is the area where the river meets the sea. Now, can you give some examples of organisms living in the story? Yes? Wow! Fabulous! Organisms in the story includes some fishes, crabs, shrimps, some plants, and birds. What about non-living things that we can find in the story? Yes? Wow! You're right! Water, sand, pebbles, and rocks are examples of non-living things in the story. Now class, I request everyone to please stand up and join me singing and dancing. Let's go to the beach! Hey! What do you want to do today? Let's go to the beach! Yeah! Beach, beach, I like the beach. Starfish, starfish. Beach, beach, I like the beach. Clam, clam. Clam, clam. Beach, beach, I like the beach. Lobster, lobster. Beach, 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 puffer fish. That was fun. Let's do it again. Sure. Beach, beach, I like the beach. Starfish, starfish. Beach, beach, I like the beach. Clam, clam. Clam, clam. Beach, beach, I like the beach. Lobster, lobster. Beach, beach, beach. Puffer fish. Okay, thank you for participating, class. And you may now take your seats and feel comfortable. By the way, class, do you like to go to the beach? Wow, that is really fun. Now I'm going to show you some pictures and guess what is it? What can you see in this picture? What is that place? Hmm? Hmm? Yes, you're all right! It's a beach, it's also a seashore, it's also a bay. Can we find it here in the Philippines? Yes, of course! We have beaches and seashores here in the Philippines. Now take a look at this picture. This is the Middle Beach Resorts that we can find here locally at Initao Misamis Oriental. Class, don't you know that these beaches, seashores, and bays is also called as intertidal zone? Now, to find out what is intertidal zone, let's watch this video. Intertidal zone is the area of the foreshore and seabed that is exposed at low tides and submerged at high tide. It is an area where the seawater meets the land during high tide and low tide. Intertidal zone can be found on sandy beaches, bays, and rocky shorelines. Intertidal zone is divided into four zones. Spray zone usually dry. Species found in here may include small barnacles, periwinkles, and rib limpets. High tide zone, wet, 
during high tides. Species might include acorn barnacles, shore crabs, sea lettuce, and rockweed. Middle tide zone, wet and dry. Species might include California mussels, sea palms, and sponges. Low tide, usually wet. Species might include kelp crab, blow top snail, and sponges. Intertidal zone is characterized by a great deal of water movement, which can range from very gentle to quite violent. Organisms in this zone have to deal with difficult environmental conditions, submerged in seawater and exposed to the air. We can find some food webs here. Tides are formed as a result of the gravitational forces between Earth, sand, and the Moon. There have been found over 300,000 species in the intertidal zone. So class, based on that video, what is intertidal zone? Yes, intertidal zone is the area where the seawater meets the land during high tide and low tide. Then, what are the sub-regions or sub-zones in the intertidal zone? Hmm? Yes! Very good! The sub-zones in the intertidal zones are splash or spray zone, high tide zone, middle tide zone, and low tide zone. What are the living organisms living in that area? Hmm? Yes! Absolutely! There are crabs, seashells, lobsters, sea stars, barnacles, sea urchins, seaweeds, kelps, anemones, limpets, fishes, and birds living in the intertidal zone. And what about the non-living things that we can find in the intertidal zone? Hmm? Very good! Examples of non-living things in the intertidal zones are sands, rocks, pebbles, seawater, mud, and wind. Now, let's have a group work. I assign you. Here is group 1, then here group 2, and group 3. Now, you're going to collaborate with your group and follow the instruction I presented here. Collaborate with your group and discuss your ideas and concepts about the intertidal zones. Make a report on it. The content may include the answers to these questions. How do you describe the intertidal zone? How do organisms interact with each other? What are the factors that can affect living organisms in the intertidal zone? What are the small habitats that can be found in the intertidal zone? I'm giving you 10 minutes to do your group work. Intertidal zone is a marine ecosystem that can be exposed to air at low tide and submerged or covered with water during high tide. Variety of organisms living in the intertidal zone are plants and animals that are vertebrates and invertebrates. Organisms interact with living and non-living things and depend on each other for survival. Some serve as producers and others are consumers. An example is a seaweed that needs sunlight energy to grow. The seaweed is consumed by a fish and the fish is eaten by the seagulls or birds. Thus, this interaction creates food chain, while the interconnecting food chain is called food web. 
but the life in the intertidal zone is difficult and challenging for the organisms. There are abiotic factors affecting them like moisture, waves, salinity, and temperature. Moisture affects the organisms because of the changing high tide and low tide making them adapt the environmental condition. Waves affects organisms because sometimes it harshly crush and wash them away. Salinity refers to the saltness of seawater as it changes during rainy times and warm weather. The changing temperature of cold and warm may the organisms to hide themselves or tolerate and adapt these changes. In the intertidal zones, there are small habitats like coral reefs, salt marshes, rocky shores, mud flats, and mangrove forests. In the coral reefs, the corals grow and provide shelter and food for fishes and other organisms. Salt marshes are areas filled with water during high tide and rain during low tide and is characterized by grasses and cattails that grows in the area. Rocky shores are areas where solid rocks are found and some organisms anchor themselves in rock or hide under the spaces of rocks. Mud flats are areas where mud from rivers and seas are deposited. Some animals live and burrow themselves in the mud. In mangrove forests, mangrove trees fill the area. It provides shelter and serve as breeding grounds for fishes and other organisms. This makes the intertidal zone very important for living and non-living things. I think everyone had already done the reports. Then let us clap our hands to all reporters. It's a good job! So class, why does the intertidal zone is important? Intertidal zone is important because it is the home of many organisms. Yes, very good! And what benefits that can human get from the intertidal zone? Humans can get food from intertidal zone. Yes, of course! And how can we protect our intertidal zone? Any idea? We can protect intertidal zone by cleaning it and do not throw our garbage there. Okay, very good idea! Intertidal zone is a marine ecosystem that is characterized by changing tides. Intertidal zones are important because many living things and non-living things interact in the area to form an ecosystem. Living things do live, grow, and reproduce in the intertidal zones. We humans are also benefited by the intertidal zone as we can get food from there and also do our outdoor activities. So we really need to protect our intertidal zone because it is the home of many organisms. We can protect the intertidal zone by not throwing garbages or any harmful substances anywhere, especially in the seashores or intertidal zones. We can also plant mangrove trees that can be useful as shelter and breeding grounds for the fishes and other aquatic animals. And class, do you have any questions? Oh, looks like none so far. I think everyone has already understand our lesson. So now, we'll have a quiz B. Listen to the questions and write the letter of your answer on your cardboard. Raise your cardboard when the timer rings. It is the area where the seawater meets the land between high tide and low tide. A. Story 
B. Intertidal zone C. Coral reefs The answer is letter B. Number 2. When is the intertidal zone covered with seawater? A. During daytime B. During high tide C. During low tide Letter B What do you call of the zone that is above highest tide level and receive wave splash? A. Spray zone B. Lower intertidal zone C. Middle intertidal zone Raise your cardboard It's letter A which of the following is not one of the abiotic factors that affects organisms in the intertidal zone? A. Waves B. Sand color C. Salinity It is letter B. Why is that some organisms can be found in more than one zone? A. They only require little amount of water. B. They want to stay longer in the water. C. They can adapt the conditions of different zones. Letter C. What kind of habitat where the corals grow and provide food and shelter for fishes? A. Salt marshes. B. Rocky shores. C. Coral reefs. The answer is letter C. Which one can be considered as an importance of rocky shores? A. It provides playground for fishes. B. Some organisms anchor themselves to rocks. C. Organisms do feed on pebbles and rocks. It's letter B. Which among of the animals can live in both splash zone and middle intertidal zone? A. Fishes B. Lobsters C. Crabs Raise your cardboard. It's letter C. The following are the habitats that can be found in the intertidal zone except a. Ocean B. Coral reefs C. Mad flats The answer is letter A. Which of the following is an importance of intertidal zone? A. It provides interactions of living and non-living things B. It serves as dumping area C. It swallows fishes when there is danger. It's letter A. Wow, very good. It's a good job. In your assignment, write an essay about the importance of intertidal zones to humans and other organisms existing in the area. It should be 100 to 150 words. And here is the rubrics. Thank you for listening and watching class. See you next time!